Here we go again. This time we got the budget Pixel 4a taking on the mid-tier LG Velvet. Who came out on top? Well, the results might surprise you. Let's take a look. If you're looking for tech reviews that give you the information that you actually care about, then hit that subscribe button and be sure to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. If you've been following my channel in the past several months or so, then you know I've been hitting the camera comparisons pretty heavy. I really enjoy creating these head-to-heads and judging by your response, I think you guys like them too. So I'm gonna keep on doing them as long as you watch. If there is a matchup that I haven't posted yet that you're looking forward to, please comment down below and let me know. Also, I have created a playlist if you've missed any of them and you wanna check them out, I'll go ahead and leave that link in the description. So once again, I do have a little system when it comes to testing out these phones. We take a look at the daylight and sun shots, portrait and macro, low lights and night shots, as well as testing out the video on the front and rear facing cameras. Now, if you've seen any of the comparison videos I've done using these particular phones against other models, most of them have been in bright sunny days and a dynamic range looked pretty good on both. Now, the day that I took these pictures, it was bright, but cloudy and very, very green. So the dynamic range on these phones would really be tested. So in the photos, the Pixel will seem to be able to keep the greens a little more dark and more true to what I was actually seeing. While the Velvet did brighten up the greens, but had a little bit more saturation, it wasn't overly exposed though. Both did a great job focusing and didn't have any issues with the lack of sun in the more shaded areas. Now in the more well-lit areas, the Pixel continued to do a really good job balancing the bright areas with the darker areas and didn't try to lighten them up. Now, because it did this, the different shades of green almost looked layered, giving the picture a more dynamic range, kind of like a 3D look. The Velvet, well, it did the opposite. It tried to balance out the light with the dark, and in my opinion, because it did this, the picture almost looked more flat. Now, in certain situations, what the Velvet is doing could actually make your picture look better, and you'll have less time spending editing a photo if this does this. Now let's take a break for a second and look at the performance of the rear video and see exactly how they compare to each other. All right, so I figured now is a good time to try out the video on the rear shooting cameras on these. And we've got the stream, or I should say creek running below us. So it's giving us some noise so you can see how well each blocks that out or lets you hear it as well. We're testing out stabilization and of course the quality both shoot in 4K. Now again, as I probably have mentioned in the video already, you got a mid-tier phone versus a budget phone. We're talking $600 versus $350 or $349. So if camera is important to you, if video is important to you, is this something that is going to help you make a decision? It very well could, because if that's what you're using it for, this is a game changer for something like the Pixel 4a because you're not spending a whole lot of money. Did a great job with the iPhone SE 2020, and uh, how does the Velvet hold up against it? Now the 4K video on both of these looked great. However, when it came to stabilization, the Velvet didn't do really good at all. I was actually kind of surprised. The Pixel did a much better job. When it came to audio, both were plenty loud in capturing my voice, but at the same time, it seems that the creek was really not blocked at all. You could definitely hear it. So when I pointed the phones up towards the sky, the same thing happened to both of them, trying to handle the amount of light being introduced to the frame. Now, when it came to getting some of that definition back into the clouds, the Velvet, in my opinion, did an overall better job in most of the shots. But then again, saturation was more giving the lower part of the picture less dynamic range. Now the Pixel did look like it was struggling in some cases, trying to keep the colors accurate and do something with the clouds. I think if you mess with either of these phones on how they were focusing, you could probably get a much better result than I was getting. Now since the Velvet does have multiple cameras, it can definitely do some things that the Pixel can't. In this example, I was able to zoom in to get a bit closer to the dog playing in the creek. Now you can zoom in after the fact on the Pixel, but it's probably not going to look as good. Now when I walked away, the dog jumped fully into the water. So I took a shot with both cameras, but on the Velvet, I zoomed in two times to see if I could get more dog into the picture. So it's nice that you have those options with the Velvet. Now, of course, you also have a super wide angle on the Velvet, which is something that I like to use a lot. 
I just wanted to make sure to get the Velvet its props, since at the end of the day, you are paying $600 for this phone. So before we get to my two favorite features of any phone test, let's go ahead and take a peek at the front facing camera. All right, so now we're testing out the front facing cameras. Right off the bat, I'm seeing that the Velvet, like I tested before, very close up, gotta really hold it back. And the Pixel is a good distance. Now, the tough part of this shot is the Pixel has the picture or the camera in the top left corner, or in this case, I've got them sideways, so top right corner, and the Velvet is right in the middle. So. When it comes to looking at the cameras, it's kind of tough uh, to see where you'll know exactly where I'm looking. But, you know, we're testing out the stabilization, which seems to be pretty good on both of them. And if I go like that, maybe it'll kind of feel like I'm fitting in both. But I apologize for the framing in this. This is horrible. Now, the front video on these is way different. The Pixel is way more natural, and the Velvet is so super saturated. The audio sounded good on both. The Velvet was louder, so you might have to bump up the Pixel at the end of the day. As far as stabilization goes, again, the Pixel did a much better job, just like it did on the rear. I was super impressed. When it comes to the portrait mode, again, these two operate in a totally different idea. The Pixel zooms in and really gives you a narrow field of focus, where the Velvet, you kind of stand back a little bit and get a wider view and give you a different look. Now, you can move in with the Velvet, but I really wanted to show you these pictures I was taking, I was standing side by side in the same spot. Now when you do an auto shot with the Pixel, it really blurs out the background, but it can be adjusted in the editing. Now the Velvet does less of a blur and looks a little bit more natural, but you can also adjust that on the Velvet as well. When it comes to the regular macro shots without that portrait, I love the colors that both of these phones produce, and it even gives you a little bit of bokeh on the back, just to make it a little bit more natural, kind of like the DSLRs. Okay, so this part is just a little bit unfair. I don't know who exactly over at Google set up this phone for night shots, but the Pixel might have a better night camera than the iPhone 11 Pro Max? Let's just take a look. So the first shots here is both cameras with no night mode on. The next shot is with a night mode, and it looked like this. <laughs> yes. So I wasn't holding these, I set them up just by a simple water bottle, and the Pixel shot for three minutes. Yes, a three minute exposure. The Velvet, three seconds. Now here's just another shot with the normal camera on both so you could see how dark it was. And now the night mode. This time the Pixel shot for four minutes. And the Velvet, yeah, does it really even matter? Oh, and by the way, I didn't really hear any complaints about me using the selfie camera on this. So here's a couple shots that I did. Of course, I noticed the Velvet was a lot more zoomed in and brighter. So when it came to having my back to the sun, the Pixel did a better job balancing those things out. The Velvet, it was a little bit more tough. All right, well, I'm gonna say it. If the camera is the most important thing for you for a phone and you don't wanna spend 600 bucks, well, the Pixel 4a destroys the Velvet in all the categories that it can compete in. I cannot wait to see what the Pixel 5 brings to the table. Of course, where the Pixel 4a does fall short is only having one lens, but is that important to you? If you wanna see all the phones that I have been testing out in the past couple months, go ahead and click this playlist right here. And of course, if you wanna see how the Pixel 4a measured up against the SE2020, click that video up there. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for the continued support. You have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.